you do miss the stun, it's like the worst feeling in the world. I don't know if you've ever oh, played absolutely. Lesh in this combo, but it's like, you feel so bad. You just feel like you shouldn't even be in the room anymore and just like walk away. But uh, I expect they'll probably be able to execute this pretty nicely. And the Murano was smartly banned out here by Sigma because that would just be a freaking nightmare if there was Shadow Demon, Leshrac, and Murana all in a tri lane just slaying whoever even comes near them. So uh, I'll, I'll be interested to see how they do tie this up. I mean, five Luna seconds, is still very good in this, seconds, in this tri lane if that's the way they want to go. And they go with the Slark. That's interesting. Oh, it is very interesting. And just to touch a little more on that on this track, I guess a lot of teams nowadays feel like maybe Jakira would be more optimal pickup. Another hero who does require a little bit of lockdown. You know, if you miss the ice path, he feels just as terrible. But he has a lot of other tools to work with as well. But it's definitely a push favorite. Driving that Lashrak as well with Nature's Prophet and his heavy push favor. So we'll see if it's something they want to fall back on. Slark grabbed up fifth. That's great. This is a guy who can snowball very, very well, very elusive. He'll try to take his A game and maybe rush down the support sooner than later. All right, well, let's go over the teams for Sigma. It's going to be Paris or Sashka on the Life Stealer. Heading up to the top lane is Miggle on the Bat Rider. We've got uh, Ten, which is fucking mad, on the Vengeful Spirit. Poss on the Ancient Apparition. And Fada going to be taking that Invoker towards the mid lane. And on your Belarus bad boys, the Power Rangers are going to be opted up. We got Moon on that Slark heading to the top rune area. Finishing out the top lane, we have Figshka. I don't know if it's a shout out to Sashka, but it's, or Fing, <laughs> the F God as he calls himself on the Shadow Demon, who of course will be accompanied with Mr. J4 on the Leshrek. In your mid lane, we got Mr. Scandal, who's a stand in, but he's been playing very often for Power Rangers, so he's pretty much like an inducted Power Ranger almost. So he's on the Storm Spirit in the mid lane, and finally to finish things off no real surprises there cheshire cat once again on his nature's profits who currently sports a pretty nice record of 13 and 8 on that nature's profit and i thought you were going to say sports a pretty nice set this set's pretty neat he kind of looks oh, like yeah, a fungus. The fungi lord yeah that's that's a real fungus fungi. lord <laughs> but we'll see how this works out it looks like it's going to be a uh trialing in the bottom lane and trialing top for Power Rangers as well, matching up against the Bat Rider and the Nature's Prophet, respectively. Uh, I think I do favor the Nature's Prophet a little bit in this, just because you can pull a lot of Treant shenanigans and uh, try to pull it through. Bat Rider doesn't really have those options, especially on the Radiant side. Yeah, and then you always have that, you know, Nature's Prophet go-to to fall back on. If things get really hairy, you could just move yourself over in the jungle to find that farm, which we've seen with, like, a Bat Rider and what have you. So, Cheshire Cat, he's been around the block for a long time, especially on the Furion, so I'm sure oh, he's going to be very much used to this. Mid lane, Scandal just put on a clinic on how to block creeps. Uh, it, might get, it might be a little awkward because there was a range creep first for Fada, but... Uh, yeah, it actually pushes in the tower. Dear God, that is not what you want. That uh, he went a little deep there, a little too much block. Yeah, now it almost worked out as fair. The, the elusive, I, I don't know if it was part of his game plan, but when you're trying to block really hard and the other guy just doesn't even care, it just blows up in your face. So, yeah, it's like, well... trying to make the best of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I'm sure he'll be able to recover just fine. And uh, both these trilands being pretty conservative at this point, but it looks like. Sigma might be going for the first kill here, not able to do so. Vengeful Spirit just going to continue to zone out this Nature's Prophet with right click. Just with the threat of being stunned, I mean, that's a very real threat. If he does get stunned, it's pretty easy for them to kill him. Feast is taken first by Paris though, so no action from him. Once he gets open wounds, and if they get the opportunity to make the jump on Nature's Prophet, he will be destroyed. I mean, the slow of the open wounds, plus you got the cold feet that will be stacked up. If you manage to land a stun as well, he'll pretty much be perma locked down. So he does have to be very careful here. Um, and of course, with Tango's on hand, a sprout might not help him too much. Yeah. And uh, looking towards the top lane, the Batrider has pulled some uh, pretty nice pull shenanigans using Firefly to do so. And uh, he got some decent experience off that, still getting some XP, so things working out pretty nicely for him. And it looks like we might have a gank in the mid lane, the Ventral Spirit wrapping around the back, to potentially kill Scandal here. It's very important you get this Storm Spirit taken down before he reaches level 6 so he can't get away. An immediate stun flying out plus the cold snap. Fada trying to do work, but now Matt is on the run as a rotation comes in from Shadow Demon, laying out a few auto attacks, and unfortunately they will have to pull back. A bit of a time waste. They were unsuccessful in the gank, and that's uh, a bit unfortunate. But regardless, Matt grabs up the rune for himself, denying it from the Storm Spirit. A little bit weirdly, Fada only has points in Quas at this point. Um... 
he was probably getting harassed a lot. He decided he needed the extra regen. Now he has Tornado. They should be able to get this kill without a problem. And we'll see as he's waiting up to initiate until he has a full up mana. No, no use in wasting that clarity. So there we go. Wave goes off. Oh, he needs to get the stun. There it is. Finally comes through. Fada throws the Tornado as well. Hits two. But now with the entrance of FNG there. Out of here. The opportunity just wasn't there. I mean, conveniently, it happened to be an invisibility room that he grabbed. They were trying to set up another one, but Shadow Demon Persistent still hanging out nearby, and uh, they did have to pull back. Quick save from the tornado denies them from getting disruption off, so that's good. But now they're pushing forward. Scandal gonna go up the hill. They get, they land the Soul Catcher. Ooh, nice Vortex back. Fada, can you get away from this one? A few more auto attacks, but nice. Manages to get away from any potential danger. No first blood yet. Yep, uses that Ghost Walk to get out of there effectively, and in the top lane, Miguel has taken this as an opportunity to really just start racking up some XP, racking up some farm. Without the Shadow Demon here, his potential for dying is way less. He can still get leashed into stun, but without Soul Catcher, they might not have enough damage to actually kill him. So, things just continuing at parity, really. Yep, and like we were saying before, Cheshire Kent not too happy with how things are going. Bottom lane takes his business into the jungle. No real surprises. Continue to farm it up. Expect him to build up into the Midas. Lately, he's been picking up that Necro book style build, that true ultra fungi lord rat. So we'll see if that's going to be the case this game. <laughs> he's taking a lot of damage from these birds, though. God damn it. He's trying to farm them down pretty hard. He wants to get the big one. <laughs> yeah, he wants that big one, but he's uh, he should be able to get it now, but... Now it looks like there's another rotation Double heading middle. Miguel, is he going to head back to his lane? Yes, he is. He picks up the double damage rune. Uh, mostly just denying that from the Storm Spirit is very important. Invoker uh, doesn't use runes too much. Some invokers do like still getting a bottle just to be able to use the runes effectively, but it's not so common. He has finished up phase boots, though. Yep, phase boots complete, and, uh, and now it, some bottle crow action here. Get away from me, Red Horse. Sends him right back to the base, and uh, that has boots also in his stash ready to go, but rotations to come from both teams. We might see a scuffle here in the mid lane. Yeah, it looks like it. Fucking Mattis here. He is only level 2. Shadow Demon here as well. He does have a bit of a level advantage, level 3. No points in poison, so he's not going to be able to use that to get vision, uh, but oh, looks like Vengeful Spirit no longer as interested, but... I mean, the carries are farming extremely well. Harris has pretty much full farm. I think he's only missed like one creep or something. And uh, up in the top lane, Slark in a similar situation. He's missed a couple more. Yeah, but as the story goes, Life Sealer has a lot of space bottom lane. Uh, without a doubt, leading the front CS. 37 and 17. Slark's right there, 27, but that's 10 CS behind because he's been imposed a little bit. Batrider's still hanging out and kind of toying with the neutrals and being around, so it hasn't been as easy for him, but as you can see right now, he's got plenty of space to work with. Yeah, there was just, you know, with, with a hero in the lane, it's just... It gets more complicated when he's pulling your creeps around as well. And Paris has literally just been sitting in the bottom lane. I don't think he's moved more than uh, a couple inches out of this spot. He's done a nice job keeping the creeps right in the right spot as soon as that Nature's Prophet left the lane. They've been pulling back, man. This Shadow Demon's committing a lot of time to just hanging around the mid lane. He's not really getting anything for himself. Like, it's just waiting for the right opportunity. Maybe waiting till Scandal's level 6. He's very close, and then they'll finally make the jump in. I guess it's pretty crucial for them to try to get this Invoker down sooner. I mean, they're committing so much time for it. And we'll see if it'll pull off. Yeah, there is a small window of opportunity for the Invoker to get off the Tornado if uh, you don't use the Vortex while you're Ball Lightning. Um... It's pretty hard. I mean, if they really go on him aggressively, there's a good chance that Fada will die. But now, fucking Matt is smoked up. He's looking for some action, but he's heading bottom. There's no one here. And they should know that he hasn't been here. Yeah, Jack he has been, been here in the like jungle for a while, so he needs to retreat. Use the rest of this haste rune and maybe consider going to the mid lane, or maybe they could just acquire this tier one pretty quickly. We'll see, but he's not going to find anyone just yet. Maybe he's waiting for them to TP in. That's definitely a possibility. They think that they are going to defend it, but it looks like PR might just be content to take their own tower. They do have the Lush Rack, and he's just using that Edict to start knocking down. And no, there is a TP coming in from the Prophet. Maybe he played into fucking Mad's plans. Oh, I think he... Ooh, oh, he's man. got no mana either. No Sprout. He hasn't even leveled it up oh, yet, so if he gets caught I out, he's he going to be in trouble. And now they definitely oh, know the Shadow Demon's here as well. And uh, full retreat here from Mad. Well, you know, this is like the second straight gank we seem to try to go for, and really it just hasn't worked out. Both teams really haven't found the opportunity yet. We're over Radiant's seven minutes. Still no attack. first blood, no kill, no nothing happening yet. Both, both teams very methodical, very slow-paced. Don't want to give anything away too early. 
And I think at this point, uh, I would have to favor Sigma just a bit. Oh, but oh, he gets the pull off on Fada in the mid lane. He's not even going to go for a kill, but he might have a bit of an unpleasant surprise here. The cold snap goes off. Oh, he dodges the stun. He's going to be denied. just fine. If that stun didn't land, probably would have died, but makes it out. And all the meanwhile, the first tower does go down, but it is a deny. Batrider manages to pull out the deny in the top tier one tower, taken away from PR, so... Props to him for being able to consistently sit in the lane and pull that one out. He did briefly go to the jungle, but he's been holding his own in this off lane. Yeah, he's picked up Tranquils in a bottle. Things seem to be going decently well for him. I mean, he doesn't have the, the quick blink dagger that we sometimes see out of the jungle ones. Uh, but I think just the fact that he's present in this top lane, making Slarth mix, miss a little bit of the CS is probably worth it. Uh, he knows that Paris is holding it down in the bottom lane. Yeah, and considering just comparing Dyer's that to Cheshire Cat's Furion, it's just, I feel like he's been doing his role just a little bit more. Obviously, Furion will shine later on when he can really begin the split push, but Batrider's getting pretty close to his true initiation potential, and he's thinking about making a go here in the mid lane. Yeah, that Tornado goes up to start it up. FNG's here, there. He pops a disruption, but now he's going to find himself a victim of Lasso Drag back. Pulse Knife going to help finish the job, but there's the first book, and now Scandal deciding he wants to go in on Fada, but there's the trees sprouting. And now he makes some, uh, makes some trees, and now Fada going to go down. He is detected. They can see him. Sentry going down. So one for one, Shadow Demon for Invoker, and they get a ward out of it. That's actually a pretty big deal. So not very successful at all for Sigma. Yeah, definitely worked out in PR's favor. Good start, good game. Batrider making use of that lasso right away, but it wasn't worth it when they were able to rotate in and commit and take down the Invoker. Definitely blew up in their face, and now they're looking to get a Tier 1 in exchange for it. This could make things even better for them. Yep, and Paris looking for the Tier 1 bottom. He rages up, and now Shadow Dance on Moon. It looks like he's going to try to take on Boss. Paris is able to take down that tower, and now Slark managing to mangle the AA. Stuck in the jungle. Gets pounced down. Pounced down, taken apart, putting the head 2 to 1. Attack. Very free top lane here. I'm surprised Sigma is not rotated over to try to take advantage of it. Just a lot of people kind of hang around in the mid lane still. But uh, regardless, a tower finally in their favor. And they get it done. And I'm sure uh, the life stealer is happy to take it in more. He's still way out in front. 71 and 20 CS for him. Is this kind of a. Uh, it looks like he's obviously going to go with the tread style build. So, or not tread, but the drums yeah. rather. Yeah, yeah, I think this is going to be the, the phase the phase drums build, the FNC build, just to be able to uh, make it through and not just get kited all the time. I mean, the problem is there is a Shadow Demon on the other team who is pretty good at kiting the Life Stealer just because of uh, Purge, obviously. Uh, but we'll see. I think Paris has enough farm where he should be able to get enough items where it's not going to take many right clicks for him to just kill people, especially the supports. So, smoke up for PR. Call me greedy here, and we might finally get to see it now, but I've yet to see this duo come out. The Batman and Robin, the Lashrek and Shadow Demon, finally both smoked up. I've been eager to see them make the disruption stun work out, but they're making the long rotation all the way to the top. Their eyes are on this AA, and if they get good positioning, this should be a really easy pickoff. And Poss has to feel pretty safe right now. I mean... He has the ward here. It looks like he might know this is happening. He's playing pretty conservative. Oh, oh no. man. Denied. They have to pull back, unable to catch it. Good game sense coming up from Agent Apparition. Didn't want to give it away too much and was playing very cautiously and did not hand over the kill. Yeah, nice job by him. He must uh, he must have had he must have just noticed that they weren't on the map. And the Shadow Demon has been on the map the whole time. I mean, he's just been hovering behind the Storm Spirit. And uh, once that leaves, they notice he knows the Lush Rack's gone. A nice job figuring out that they are coming for him. And now he's just working towards level 6 pretty successfully, might I add. And uh, once he does get that up, it should get a bit easier for Sigma. And as you can see, Blink Dagger now acquired on the bat, followed up with a smoke, and it's time to make something happen. And meanwhile, bottom lane, both the true cores kind of duking out for their own CS. No aggression yet, but just kind of a bit of a respectful farm as Lifesteal will pull back into the jungle now to get more copious amounts of farm, take advantage of that Midas, etc., etc., and Slark will just sit persistent in the lane. Ooh, right when the Blink Dagger comes up, the smoke comes out for Sigma, I think. They want to kill the Storm Spirit. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to find Scandal, though. He is very far back behind the tier one, and now they're just going to continue up. They'll be happy with any kill, as long as they can get one. I mean, when you smoke like this, you really have to get a kill. Otherwise, you're losing Dyer's a lot of time. Attack. You're losing money. Attack. And now he fireflies up the cliff. He's going to be able to find FNG here. There he goes. He grabs him. 
pulls back. This should be a very easy kill. The Ancient Apparition is here as well with the Chilling Touch. And now, oh, that it is tough on this. Scandal comes in. Tornado sails through. The AA ult is there as well. Scandal, he's going to die. He shatters. Triple kill for Poss. Oh, my God. Sigma just turned this one on its head with that triple kill. Dyer's middle tower is under oh, it just kind of all came in their favor right there. They had the easy pick up on Shadow Demon. Scandal thought he could make something happen. Wasn't counting on that many of the cavalry for Sigma being right there. Dyer's and with the assistance of the A8 ultimate, attack. they just clean house the top lane. And Ancient Apparition inherits a lot of gold and XP, which you typically would think would be kind of blah on a support. But Ancient Apparition, if he gets yeah. the levels in gold, oh, yeah. he gets that scepter early, whoo, you're going to be in for a rough game. Oh yeah, it, it, it makes me happy just thinking about it. Hey, that farm. Hopefully he'll make some good items out of it. Uh, Moon and Paris, just like you were saying, continuing to farm. And we'll see what Paris goes into from now. I mean, when you do get the drum build and the phase build, sometimes you see people go for like a basher early. Armlet is the most conventional choice uh, just to maximize your damage. And Slark, he's been building towards this for a while. The Shadow Blade is up for him, so he's going to be trying to pick off some supports. Alright, big Ooh, Power Rangers well. smoke. Yep, they're hunting right through the high ground. They're getting pretty aggressive here. They want to catch oh, someone else. And meanwhile, on the side, Jungle, they do manage to catch out. They're blinking and they want to get Miggle. For the redemption here, can they get it? Nope, and he'll fly globals. Blast right in. BS will end up being taken down. And unfortunately, Mad Bomber as well. They trade right now one for one support. And they also quickly last up the Shadow Demon. He has to be careful on how he jukes it out. He's very low. They do manage to get him down. Double kill for Sashka, aka Paris. And, uh,. The rest of the squad are forced to pull out. Big favorite right now for Sigma. Petra Cat manages to snag one with the ultimate. He takes down the Bat Rider, but again, Sigma just hooking up perfectly with a Tornado EMP AA ulti, and that is just a devastating amount of damage at this point in the game. There's not really much that uh, that PR can do about it, honestly, if they land that combo. They pretty much just all die. There's, they don't have nearly enough HP to deal with that. I mean, look at all of the heroes on PR. Like none of them have more than 900 HP. Tornado goes for EMP as well. Here's the ALT. They don't even need it this time. And now Scandal has darted in. Is he gonna get punished for this? A nice swap to make sure that he stays safe. But now a disruption follows up. Here comes the Slark. He got pounces in easily. Gets what kill with the pact. And now Life Stealer has jumped inside. Poss. They're looking to make an exit. Sentry Ward goes down. D Wards. About still a support support nice uh you know power rangers holding strong here don't want to get diverted too much but we were kind of or at least i was personally expecting the sigma are coming to game right now they're coming off oh, a yeah. loss they've been very wishy-washy according to as of 6.8 sigma's been 6 and 20. very unfortunate attack. record for them they have pulled off a couple of nice wins like i said before off cloud nine and such but they need to prove themselves they don't want they don't want to be casted aside here power rangers on a big win streak they want to shut them down so i'm i'm really impressed by sigma they're making good work they grab Miguel in the bottom lane, the Vortex comes out, but now they're not able to kill him, and Scandal's completely out of mana, stuck with nowhere to go, Tornado sails through, they're gonna be able to get that, one more right click, Paris is gonna clean that up, now Moon's on the run, and he moves very nice, meeting Booker, unfortunately the A ulti's gonna miss, but I'm not sure it's gonna matter, double kill for Paris. This is going to be quick, man. I just said it too. Good rotation to the bottom. Invoker steps in and does what Quaswex does best. Takes him right down. The EMP is just devastating to the Storm Spirit. So he can't make anything happen. Scandal's in for a hard one right now. And man, conveniently enough, Lifestealer, the one to pick up most of the kills. He's sitting right now 4-0 already at 16 minutes in. He's going towards a Sange. Sange Yasha build. Wow. Invoker catches another great two-man EMP, drains the mana of the Leshrac, drains the mana of the Shadow Demon, and now they have to go back to base, because they got nothing, nothing at all in the tank, and uh, Sigma just beautiful team play, and you know, they were playing not with their full Rasta for a while, Fada was absent for some games, uh, they had to use Funzi as a stand-in for a while, and uh, now they're back with five, proving that they still are a team to be reckoned with, and you know, based on this performance, I can't disagree with them. Dyer's middle I really hope, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not going to be a biased Dyer's person at all, but I kind of want Sigma to be able to get this one out. They deserve it. They, they definitely put in the work and the effort, so they're pushing really hard for this one. They're going, speaking of push, I guess, they're going for the tier one in the mid lane. They want to get it. Sasha completely steps in, wants to be able to get the last hit. PR not nearby, but they do get jumped and pulled right FNG. back. They're going right for the shot. Oh, he them down. disappeared. Ancient Apparition Poss picking up another kill. The Wrath flies through. Slark, he's looking for blood. Maybe he's looking for the courier. Is he going to find it? No, he is not. That Shadow Blade about to run out. He needs to be very careful here not to get snagged. He's just fine. He runs out. He's going to go run into Paris. 
Yeah, I mean, Power Rangers with this Slark pickup, they haven't really seen him being able to reach the potential what Slark should be. You know, that snowball crazy hero. And he oh actually eats the god. open wounds. He's Look getting smacked in the butt. Oh my god, what have I done? He's trying to retreat to the north and gets away and realizes quickly that Paris is just a little more farmed and a, a little better off right now. Yeah, he's got the Sanja as well. Maybe we'll get a couple mains, mames here to help him just continuing to track down these, uh, these supports. And this is that build that we were talking about Radiant's earlier. Just making sure you attack. can't get kited nearly as easily. Make them commit a lot more. And uh, I do like this build. And his farm is so accelerated that he's going to have some really big items really fast. I mean, it's 18 minutes. And look at his farm. Glancing at the graphs, it shows that as well. Sigma, 7,500 advantage in both gold and experience. Wow, has been denied. Well, we saw him commit a lot to that mid lane earlier, so I'm not yeah, really that's too true. surprised by that. And he's just trying to be, his, you know, the best babysitter he can be. But uh, Sashka hasn't really needed the opportunity yet to, like, hop up in the bat, make something happen just yet. He's just content on farming. He's getting all the free space and a few extra kills along the way. He's like, I got a good thing going here. Why uh, bother going for any sort of infest bombs just yet? He has a lot of options to work with, but he's just content on farming for now. Four staff is going to be the attack. choice for Miguel. Very standard, obviously, able to pull them further away from the fight. Poss is going for an Aghanims, and this is a great use of all this farm. This is what you really want to see out of your Ancient Apparition. It increases that, that freaking annoying Ice Blast duration, the Frostbite, to 17 seconds, which is just an absurd amount of time. Now, it looks like they're on the hunt for Scandal. Are they going to find him? He is way Radiant's back in the jungle. Drops down the Remnant. This attack. does give you some flying vision, so it's easier to spot out Miguel. Drops another one, and he's just trying to figure out where he needs to go to not die. Come on, Miggle, jump in there. You got it. He blinks Woo! in, but they just miss each other. Oh, wow. That game sense, though. Switch spots, and Scandal's able to get away. I don't know. Did he have vision? They just conveniently... Yeah. No, this is the remnant tower. gives you vision. Oh, okay, very, okay. Very wow. nice. So nice swap yeah. right there to get away. They throw out their own smoke, and maybe they look to counter-initiate here and move on back. Oh, they want to take down the Nature's Prophet. <laughs> Paris jumped inside the Invoker, and they went down and punished that Nature's Prophet. You don't try to take our tier ones. Those are ours. Wow, full smoke here from PR. Four man. We're not gonna get anyone though. Slark's really hungry though. He wants to find someone, but he will not be able to get it. And that's pretty much been the story of the game. This is we've seen this a couple times now. They're trying to make ganks happen, but Sigma, with their game sense, they know it's coming. They step back and avoid any potential danger. They get the pick off on the treasure cat, so they're moving well ahead. Eleven to six. And uh, we'll see if they can pick up a few more towers and kills for themselves and just kind of put a lid on this one. Dyer's bottom yeah, Power Rangers are attack. really looking for like team fights. They they need to kill the Bat Rider Radiant's or not get picked off before the team attack. fight. But I don't know. This game is not going how they wanted. They need to get either pick offs on the storm. They need to man fight with Dyer's the Slark. Things are just fallen. not going well. Sigma is farming far more efficiently. I mean, you look at the Invoker. He's pretty stacked. He's building his way toward a orchid and you look at the storm he just does not have nearly as much yep and uh, speaking of additional initiation bat rider does get that four step complete all the typical tools that a bat rider needs in his tool belt let's see if he can take advantage he's not showing them just yet he has the four staff available but just based on past performance in this game he'll probably want to take advantage of it sooner rather than later and with the gold disadvantage mounting for pr i mean they've already pretty much lost the farm more so team fights while definitely not ideal for them i mean fighting into an invoker they definitely need to get a good pick off first but they're gonna try to get slark in the bottom lane nope father gonna get the emp off but they need to get a crucial pick off before this team fight starts because if not they're gonna get railed by like the bat rider lassoing their key hero or fada just spamming spells out and they've got no way to deal with that either so things are honestly looking pretty bleak for Power Rangers. I'm not sure what the best thing for them to do to get back in this game is. Maybe just rely on Cheshire Cat to just wrap this one out. Sweat's invoker is just something else. He just puts out two spells and immediately Slark has to head or sorry, Slark has to head all the way back to the base and it pretty much costs him nothing. And now he makes a shift to the top. He gets jumped on Scandal immediate jump and rips him right apart. Once again, right after I praise him, he gets ripped right down, taken apart. PR managed to get a little bit more momentum in their favor now. Let's see if they can capitalize on this. But uh, for now, congregate to the jungle, everyone. Well, this is the step in the right direction. You see they get that pick off. Now they're forming up. They've got the Leshrac on their side. I think they need to use that to start taking down towers after picking off a key hero like the Invoker. So we'll see if they're able to make this happen. Slark is looking for a target on the way out. Looks like he's going to be going for a Scotty. I have to imagine that's what that ultimate orb's going to be. Them stats. 
I mean, I'm not, right? It's been pretty good time to time. He's got, a lot of, he's, he's got a long ways to go, though, before he can get it. If he can get a couple pickoffs, definitely would be favorable, but he's got a lot of work to do for now, farming up the Ancients. A blast the ult, Jeez. but uh, here comes... VS scouts him out, obviously sees him there, the quick pounce away. That's something that he does best. Gets away from any potential danger and runs up to the north. Power Rangers use that four-man gank, and these two supports just sat behind the Storm Spirit, but Sigma didn't take the bait. They had no interest. They're like, alright, well, if you're not actually going to push our tower, then we're not actually going to stop you. And they just keep the AA there, continue farming the map, and as a result, Again, just a loss of efficiency for PR. In this game of farming, I mean, whoever's more efficient is definitely going to be the one to come out on top. Yeah, and uh, to be honest, I'm a little curious here. I see Sigma's playing on it now. I was surprised at how long this Tier 1 in the top tower has been standing. Usually for a lot of teams, especially on the Radiant side, the Tier 1 top is just so favorable because then you can eliminate them from being able to have the easy access TP and you can begin to control the jungle, which would be very important for Sigma, especially Dyer's with a Batrider. You want to be able to get some wards attack. down, catch anyone out farming. Radiant they have a lot of jungles, like prominent jungles, Dyer's so now they get it down fallen. and they're looking to push on forward. Let's see if the supports can Radiant's step on in, get a little more map control attack. and be able to get some pickoffs. And Cheshire Cat just using Radiant's the trance. Oh, wow. What a deny from down. Miguel. And he TPs Radiant's down there, drops the trance to try to take the tower down, and then just Dyer's TPs himself out of there. And wow, attack. the Dire are very deep in Radiant territory. Tornado going to miss AA ulti as well. And it looks like they're just going to disengage. Miguel is going to run into two supports if he's not careful here. And with Scandal not too far away, he does need to be careful. And now, in the top lane as well, Moon under pressure. Duels. Oh, he's going to get EMP. There's, oh my god, he's stuck. He might be invisible. We're not going anywhere, buddy. And now they're just going to break him down and stream real quickly. You came to the wrong neighborhood, my friend. Unfortunately, <laughs> Slark was caught out a little too deep, made the rotation up to the north, but the rest of the Sigma squad were right there and just shut him down. Yeah, that did not go how we planned. And just look at the net worth. Paris is just sailing ahead. It's just not even close. He's had this entire game to whatever, do whatever he wanted. He is 6-0 and with 184 last hits at 24 minutes. This is a perfect game. For Paris, and he is a player that knows how to farm if you give him the opportunity. Tower is under attack. All right, Power Rangers, are they thinking about making a TP here on the top, or are they going to just hand away this tier two? They're all kind of farting around the jungle on the bottom Sigma side, but they're going to hand Dyer's it over. That's two tower towers back to back, and even more gold in the pocket of uh, Paris. So that's quite surprising. And they also lost a Slark recently, so their cores, you know, not doing quite as well. It's just a little unnerving right now for Power Rangers. I'm a little surprised they didn't try to deal with that push. I mean. They're not going to get their own tier 2 out of it. They, they just traded two towers for nothing. Nothing at yeah. all. Aghanim, wow. This is a 25-minute Aghanim for Ancient Apparition, who, on the back of that triple kill in the early game, has found exactly what he wanted. Now he can sit in the fountain. He doesn't have to play the game anymore. Just yep, <laughs> be there, done. throw out the ultimates all you want, and that's more than enough to be a big factor in any fight. This is crazy. I mean, just... It's now a mini-game. Yeah. Mini-game for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just add to Apparition. Step one, learn how to land ult. Step two, win bottom game. Tower is under attack. Now the Orchid's coming online for the Invoker. This should give them some great game against the Storm, against the Slark. This is a really nice item. Uh, against this entire PR squad, really. All these look like very juicy Orca targets to me. Ancient Apparition ult gonna slam Moon in the face, and now he's gonna realize that is an Aghanim. Why am I still Frostbitten? I hate my life. BKB up for Scandal. That's gonna help him deal with this at least a little bit. But when you're going BKB first on Storm, like before anything else, just after Boots Bottle, you know that you are in, you are up Shit's Creek. Like, that is not the item for him at all. You really want that after you can already do something. Because at this point, Scandal actually can't do anything. Like, he doesn't have an Orchid. He doesn't have a Bloodstone for lots of mana regeneration to be able to just stay in fights forever. He's got a BKB. KV to try not to die to this invoker. Yeah, he doesn't get the opportunity to do a lot that most Storm Spirits do, like be able to pick off support maybe on his own. He won't be able to do much on his own. Sigma's been showing that they're able to rotate, they're able to clump up and be together. They will not allow Scandal to get those easy pickoffs, and now he's forced to play very defensively and maybe only go for pickoffs and initiations when he has his full team behind him. So that's a big part of Storm Spirits' game that he did not get to enjoy. Not at all. I mean, he's just been shut down. And now, whoa, wow. Sigma, they're on the offensive. Miguel just Radiant's wandered into the base to see if there was anyone attack. defending it. No one doing so, and now they're just going to go back and defend. I think they were looking for a free pick off there. 
Wow, yeah, that's it, a knee blade. In theory, okay. it'd be great. <laughs> I mean, Life Sealer has knee blade, so. Uh, that's actually just absurd. And 1k gold. My god, this guy yeah, he is, is rich. So far, 226 last hits. It's continuing. That Abyssal Blade is going to let him lock down the storm and kill him who has almost no HP. Let him lock down the Nature's Prophet and kill him. Really, let him kill anyone he wants. The Slark is still a little bit harder. He's one of the tankier heroes on the team, as well as having, obviously, the Shadow Dance. Uh, but. I mean, make it known that is a bad, bad item. If you're if you're behind and someone on the other team gets an abyssal blade, you're it's just really hard. They're trying to sneak a roach right here. Ugh. Desperation roach. Yeah, this basically. Isn't there. <laughs> Get it down quick, fellas. We can't do much damage. But oh god, he throws a tornado but... through. Oh, there it comes. Oh man, they got it. They're treading on thin water right now. Oh man, oh, this is gonna be bad. Yeah, now the mental here here as well. They do get it immediately. The BKP Popeye stands to swap a fucking match and tries to pull him out. But here's the lasso. The Aegis already used disruption, comes off by FNG, but he's caught by the ice wall. He's not going too far at all. Now Moon stuck trying to pounce out, not making it, not able to do so. And they're trying to. Ooh, what a use! He throws out the flame rig as well. And uh, they're able to take down a couple of heroes after that was definitely a greedy attempt at Roche, and they absolutely got punished for it. Yeah, it's one of those like it's just we need it was desperate. It was a desperate Roche attempt. Yeah, it and, was we need yeah. this or we lose, and they didn't get it, and now they probably lose. Sigma is playing their A game right now. I mean they have a, a really good draft. I would definitely favor theirs over PR, but it's also just I think Sigma's playing really well. So they're they're definitely being Dyer's a presence the whole game through, pushing up the attack. hill right now, going for the tier Dyer's three. PR have un been unable to capitalize with a lot of these little strats they have, you know, no mm -hmm. Shower Demon, Lashrak really yeah, Slark hasn't been able to snowball and no Storm Spirit snowball. It's just nothing has been going their way. J4 on the way out, gets swapped back in, pops off the ghost after they stay alive for the moment, but now Paris is still on the field, he's able to take him down, Scandal is able to pick off one, Fada is down, but he is in the threat of shattering, Migo gonna go down as well in Moon, and it looks like they might have gone a bit too deep in the base here, fucking mad, the only one left with Posh just in full retreat, oh, Paris, he's still kicking around, he's gonna try to chunk down Moon, he's able to do so, Posh does fall, but Paris, he's wicked sick, and I'm not sure anyone can fight him, the Abyssal Blade goes off, but now four Staffed away, Scandal has to leave as well, and they just Radiant's can't really touch Paris. He is just way too hot right now. All that work just to like get the tower, and that's it. I mean, if there was a little more focus on trying to get at least the melee racks down, I don't know if they would have got it or not. They do get a couple of kills. Paris still doesn't fall. Seven and zero for him right now, inheriting plenty of extra gold. Hyperstone online, fifteen hundred in the bank. He's going for that AC. Attack. It's absurd. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. He's, he's just gonna be hitting people so hard they're gonna be so sad when he hits them oh my god he has the hyper stone as Radiant's well now to just oh jeez he's just so farmed they just here's the problem for pr they had the strategy to try to win the laning phase it did literally nothing like the lesh the lesh combo never happened the shadow demon wasn't really able to do anything this entire game so he's behind uh and in the meanwhile on the other side you've got an ancient apparition getting a triple kill at like eight minutes or whatever and he's now built that towards an agonim so just a game of little efficiencies a great job by sigma just dodging a lot of these ganks dodging a lot of the things that really make pr strong and you know just nature's profit at least in competitive play usually can't win you the game he's going for a hex now he's making his best effort though Yep, the early and mid game without question going towards Sigma, and uh, I guess it. You know, we we wonder now, Power Rangers, do they have to fall back on Rat Dota? But no time for that. Bottom lane, Scandal. He moves in. The pole is there now. Fucking Matt, he's somehow still alive. And wow, Miggle has found Scandal. He brings him down with the flame break, and with him with the Scandal down, I'm not sure that there's much that they can do. He is going to try to get out of here. No, not able to do so. Eris says no. He abyssals him, and now Slark. He's over here. He's up in the air. Bot has tossed him. And now Vengeful Spirit, fucking mad, it's gonna stun him, get that kill, and lock it down for Sigma as their advantage just continues to mount. Tower is under attack. They're trying to do a little rat dota here, but it's not gonna be very effective. I mean, we're almost at that point that we just need to put a fork in it. I mean, Power Rangers are just getting assaulted from all fronts. The early laning phrase, the mid game, the lifesteal is already out of control. He looks like he's already at like a 40 minute game at 30 minutes in, so mm -hmm. it's just getting a bit uncontrollable. I mean, there's always the fact that they do manage to get the lifestealer down. There's a sweet bounty there for him, but I don't know who will be able to capitalize even off that additional goal. I mean, the problem is like, 
Paris has, uh, he's accelerated the game without telling anyone on PR. He's arrived at the late game before anyone else, and he is just so farmed, almost has that AC completed. Nature's Prophet just has to run in fear from Paris and hope to God that he doesn't try to run him down. I apologize ahead of time for any background noise. My wife is cooking. <laughs> But, uh, oh, that sounds like a that sounds like a nice thing. I'm jealous. It smells I'm jealous. pretty good here, not gonna lie. But uh, the smell of defeat in this game, <laughs> PR. <laughs> that segue though, right? Here we go. Oh, poor PR. Man, PR. I mean, Lesh does not have any points in his ultimate. He just has had no opportunities to do so. I think they know that pickoffs at this point have become the thing that they can plan on. Wow, look at this. They are all smoked up. This looks like what you do and in a pub they game might even when, ult. when you're ready no, to okay. <laughs> It looked like the A ult was heading right there. How devastating would that be? You can't even smoke and hide in the trees without eating that big AA ult. Because for these supports, if they get hit by one of those ice blasts, they have to start second, guess, uh, second guessing rather if they want to even be a part of the next fight or not. They'll easily be dwindled to about half-life, maybe even lower. So it's like, should I even sacrifice myself for this fight or not? Look how scared Power Rangers are. I mean, they're literally hiding in the jungle when... Sigma's on the other side of the map. I mean, things are things are real bad. The shop is closing. The company is bankrupt. Power Rangers need a miracle at this point, I think, to win this game. Sigma's game sense has been impeccable. I mean, oh, yeah, they're perfect. trying to look out for a pickoff in that side lane, but Miguel or Miggle rather is like, uh, I'm not gonna hang out here any longer. He just goes ahead and opts up to the bottom lane with the rest of his comrades, and it's time to take the racks. He flies up, pushes on in. Will Dyer's he manage to find a pickoff here? Oh, oh my lord, gotcha! Hold him right back, and poor little Cheshire Cat has been easily neutered and taken right back down. Paris moves on to Beyond Godlike. They're going for the Mad Bomber. Can they get him? Scandal moves in, throws up in the air, thrown right back down into the afterlife. The rest fall down. Four fall. Rack should be acquired. And if right, the white flag, rather, will probably be raised. There it is, Greg. Holy moly. <laughs> Sigma, just perfect play, really, this game. I mean, the experience of this team is just showing. I mean, they've been to internationals. They know how to play Dota 2. Their game sense is near perfect, this game at least. And just great execution easily carries them through our last game of the day. Yep, Power Rangers get their six-game win streak taken down as Sigma finally pick up a win for themselves.